It's really rare to marry the same man twice. <laughs> A lot of people get married twice, but not to the same person. My name is Janessa. Um, and if I didn't live through my story, I wouldn't believe that this stuff actually happened. Well, we have three awesome kids, and they're amazing. They actually just bring life to our season, and it's just amazing to have them and be blessed with being able to raise them. My name is Jean LaFontaine. Um, I have a wife that I love so much, I married her twice. I have two beautiful biological children, and I have an adopted son who almost didn't get to come home. Owen's the oldest, and I would say... Definitely our more logical child. He, he notices everything. He's very intuitive and very observant. Um, Annalise is our free-spirited little girl. She will prey on a whim about anything. Malachi definitely is compassionate. He, uh, he just he loves everybody. Um, he would give you anything if you just asked him. He will give away his heart in seconds without thinking twice, and there's just an innocence about him that is just awesome. And all the three personalities together just make an awesome dynamic. It's, it's a lot of fun in our house, <laughs> and it's a lot of different adventures from each of their personalities. I think I was drawn to him because he was fun. He was out of my normal box. I knew from the, the moment I met her in the first couple of dates we went on that this, this woman has my heart and that's just not going to change and I, I would do whatever it took to fight for her. Um, well, when we were married the first time, everything was going great for a short while and then things started becoming very surface level. I tried not to go very deep or emotional with anybody. Um, I kept a lot of things to myself. When you start having problems, instead of working it out, we just ran from it because it was easier. The struggles that I had, the baggage that I carried, and I put all those expectations on her. I was just, I was lost and very miserable underneath. I just wasn't, I guess, aware that there was more to life than what I was doing. You know, when I first met Jean and Janessa, it was in a counseling session. Somebody had actually brought them to me because these 20-year-old kids were in a locked up, broken marriage. I looked at Jean, I thought, you know what, this young man is probably one of the most emotionally dead people I've ever met. And his wife is just angry. But the crazy thing was, I honestly felt like I heard God say, this marriage is over but watch what I'm going to do. I didn't really believe at first that the divorce was actually happening. I thought it was kind of just like an awakening or just like a, a bad argument that kind of just came to a head. I was very alone pretty much. Um, I can recall sitting in my house on my steps just trying to think of someone to talk to, somebody I could call that would listen to me. And um, I really had nobody. Well, we went to the church as a last-ditch effort to save our marriage, and it was kind of a lost cause on my end. I only went to say that we had tried counseling and had tried everything to save our marriage. And then through the church, they actually were doing an Alpha program, and we were already in the middle of our divorce. I was invited and encouraged to go there by Bruce. He cared for my heart more than anybody I've ever met. And when I didn't believe things were possible, he did. So. I didn't know what Alpha was going to be, but I had never met anybody like that, so I knew I needed to take his advice. Um, we both decided to go for very different reasons. I went um, because I needed, I needed healing. I needed to discover who I was because who I thought I was was just a facade. I was broken, so much so that I was on a mission to make people mad, <laughs> and that is one of the sole reasons I went to Alpha was to see how many people I could upset, and including my ex-husband, because I knew he would be there. I needed to discover what this life was actually about, because um, I had nowhere else to go. It was just, it was a warm place I didn't expect. Alpha um, began to show me that people can be trusted, that they, I can have more than surface level relationships with people. And these people loved me no matter what I threw at them. I, belonged because I didn't belong and it was actually very comforting and just a really relaxing atmosphere to not be okay. It didn't matter what got me there, um, 
didn't matter that I was going through a divorce. Um, these people really were ready to listen to what I was going through and to see what my, my thoughts were. And that took Jesus from being just a God that allows things to happen and kind of watch over us to showing me his personality and the fact that he will walk through it with us and we can talk to him. It was also a place you could count on people just loving you and they're genuinely interested in how your day was and how you were doing. It wasn't a place where I felt like I needed to be somebody that I wasn't. It's just real people and just people loving you exactly where you're at. She, had, she has a part of her personality that just makes me alive and I knew I couldn't live without that. So even though we both made mutual mistakes and the divorce happened, I still knew that this was my wife and I was going to do whatever it took to try everything I could to, to get her back. I wasn't so sure. <laughs> I actually was done. I, I didn't have the same ray of hope. It took a little more of a process for me and a little more softening of my heart to, to realize that, I guess. What Jean and Janessa encountered in Alpha was the gospel. And for their situation, the gospel came and took all these really broken parts of a marriage. And the beauty of it was for this marriage, as they heard the gospel of Alpha, as they grew, as they had people stand around them, God restored this marriage. I think we had enough time apart and we had grown enough individually to where we both realized that it was something we still wanted and we just basically just didn't do it right the first time and we knew that yeah with the changes that we're making and the different people that we can be and are becoming that it would would be a completely different marriage. Second wedding was really different than the first. Um, it was more intimate with close family and friends. It was wonderful in the ability to really focus on getting married and what that meant instead of all the bells and whistles of a big wedding. It, the, all the people that were there really had a meaning in our life. And I was able to stand with Bruce at the altar with my wife for a second time with a guy who fought with me to see all this happen. And that, uh, that just has a huge meaning to it. Um, well, the first marriage, um, when things started going a little bit awry, we thought that we needed to have children um, to help our marriage. So we tried for the entire first marriage to get pregnant, and for no known reason, we could not get pregnant. Um, we got married the second time. Within a month, we ended up pregnant unexpectedly. And actually, as our first child was only two months old, we ended up unexpectedly pregnant again. And we now have two biological children, less than a year apart. I think we, we both knew, especially after having two biological kids, that, I mean, we just, we loved the pieces. We just knew that we could have more kids. I mean, it wasn't a health issue, but there were so many kids out there who need to be loved and need homes the same way that we were able to provide for our kids. And we both sat through Orphan Sunday um, at church, and we didn't say anything to each other during the sermon, but we knew, we kind of both just knew afterwards that it was time to do that. Um, we actually also decided the next day to find an agency. We both felt that Ethiopia was the right country. Um, and we actually left the gender open um, and Malachi was handed to us. And came up to the challenge where it looked like Malachi may not be able to go home um, to the United States. And now we're going through that problem together as two new people and a new marriage. And instead of fighting for things by ourselves, we're fighting together and it, it definitely solidified us in our relationship. Um, when we got the phone call, I kind of held my breath when they called me because it could have gone either way. And we were actually his parents over in Ethiopia, but we weren't allowed to bring him home to complete our family. And I got the phone call and kind of paused for a second. And they actually said, when do you want him to come home? And it was just an amazing feeling. I think I probably cried before I said anything. Owen and Annalise actually loved him. They, he was right in their age range, and it was really easy for them to adjust because neither one of them knew what it was like to be an only child anyways. Um, so they were best friends to begin with, and they just thought it was wonderful to add another brother into the mix of the craziness. And Once we knew that Malachi was going to be our son, that he was who we were adopting, 
we printed up a picture of him and we put him in on our fridge in the kitchen and we would just tell him, this is your brother. This is who God blessed us with and he will be coming home and he's gonna be part of our family. And we would pray for him. And they prayed through the situation where we didn't know if he could come home. And that also started to teach them that they could have faith in God. That if we do ask him for things that he does provide. And they got to see Malachi come home and they knew that it was God that did it. When you think back to that, watch what I'm going to do, I will never in my life forget Thanksgiving morning that year when I got this call from John and Janessa, and they, they'd asked for it to be more of a private affair, so it wasn't a big greeting party there. But the pictures began to show up on Facebook. God not only rescued this couple, He not only restored their marriage, he not only gave him these two awesome kids, but then because he tells stories like he loves to put exclamation points at the end of stories, he brings this orphan home on Thanksgiving Day. And I'll never forget that day, ever, because this is who God is and these are the stories he loves to tell.